published a book earlier this year, I'm sorry, an article, January this year, on how I weaned a, a female patient that was taking 42 to 58 pills a day down to three pills a day within three months. And now, two years later, she's on zero pills a day. Wow, that's impressive. So it is an exit drug. So she came, this patient comes in, wants to get started. You know, there's a whole process. We get them registered. The state of Florida has to approve it. They have to complete their application online. And then the state sends them an email saying, congratulations, you've been approved. That means they, all the boxes were checked. And then they're free to go into the dispensary. Okay. All right. So in that interim, from the time she saw us in the office to the time she got the card, her and her husband went to Vegas for, you know, a business trip and hang out. They went to a dispensary, got some chocolates, edibles. Each piece is 10 milligrams. So they both take one, and, and not, you know, half hour, an hour later, they don't feel anything. And so she's like, this doesn't work. Let me do another one. She takes another one. She claims that she doesn't remember anything that happened. But nine months later, she gave birth to a ba baby girl. <laughs> so we know what happened. <laughs> I have very similar stories. Well, with my, with my ex, we were, it was a New Year's Eve a bunch of years ago, and someone gave us one of those cookies, and we got kind of split it in half, and then in half again, quarters. We just took a quarter, nothing happened. We're like, oh shit, this is not working. So we took another quarter, right? And then, like, all of a sudden, like, I'm like, I'm feeling weird. Then she goes out to get some, she come, comes back, she gets stuck in the doorway. She can't turn left. She's like, I can't turn left. I'm like stuck in the doorway. And like she finally makes it in. And I'm like not, I'm feeling terrible. Like, I, I am par I'm, I'm, a, I'm hating myself, all right? Now, the reason we took them this morning, our kids were skiing. We were up in a place called Mammoth Mountain, right? We had three kids. And they would, it was like 9.30 a.m. They'd just gone out to the slopes. We had perfect time of six, seven hours to experience this, right? So all the kids are gone, right? So now I'm in that state of panic. But at least it's just the two of us. All of a sudden, I'm like, She's like, yes, I can't, I can't answer the door. She says, I, who is it? It's my son. It's Carter. I, I'm, I don't want to ski today. I'm like, oh, no. He's like, <laughs> open the door. I'm like, I can't. I'm like, so I open the door. He goes, can you make me an omelet? I'm like, no. I'm like, I'm like so I'm hearing, I'm trying to struggle to make my son an omelet. One by one, all the kids came back that day. So I'm living panic stricken. Yeah. I think it took me three days to recover from that until I felt normal again. But that was so the reason for that, though, is, is it's the ratio of what? Of THC to the CBD was off? Is that what it is? Right. Ratio of THC to CBD, um, you greened out because it. Greening out, you know, you get paranoia, you get the, the palpitations, you feel like your heart is beating out of your chest. Uh, you get, you know, sweaty, your pupil, your mouth gets dry, you get paranoid. Some people hallucinate, which, you know, cannabis is not a hallucinogenic, mm -hmm. it's not LSD, it's not acid, yeah. it's not like you're dropping acid, you know. So, but all of, all of those effects, you know, blow you out of the water could because you, it's too much. Could you knock that out with a big dose of CBD? You can knock it out with a big dose of CBD or you could suck on a lemon because lemon has limonene, which is a terpene. And limonene, the terpene, can block the action of the, uh, greening out. Or three grains of pepper, which has um, caryophyllin, which is another terpene that also blocks the effect or the action of the THC. So is the, is the methodology that competitive inhibition when you take when you, when you, when you um, take CBD, the CBD basically competes with the THC for the receptor site? Is it heavier? Does it knock it out? It's a is partial it, antagonist. So it does it does knock it out, but not fully. It's right. not like Narcan where, bam, it, yeah. it blocks. What, what's heavier? What, what's more attractive to the receptor? Is it CBD or THC? Well, to the CB1 receptor, THC is more attractive. Yeah. But... CBD will come in kind of like compete with it, right? compete with it partially. Got it. Yeah. So it'll kind of. So I guess the idea would be is it's probably more effective to beforehand to make sure the ratio is right than after the fact. Yeah. So so okay for those because I think it's a really common problem by the way. Mm -hmm. So for those of us who do get paranoid, the, the the solution is if you do find yourself in a situation where you are not feeling right, a take. CBD, B, take suck on a lemon or three grains of pepper. Oh yeah, exactly, and that'll block. And well, for me, I do all of them at once. Oh, exactly, times three. Yeah, so I take <laughs> suck on three lemons, take eighteen grains of pepper, right, and then take a massive dose of CBD. And then OCD to, much? And then if I feel, then I, then if I balance out, oh, let me take more THC. Try to find the sweet, exactly find, the, find sweet the sweet spot. spot. Exactly, it's always about a sweet spot, right? And it's all about the sweet spot. It's called so, a perfect state of toxic poise, you know. So where we start people is typically on like a one to one CBD to THC ratio. Okay, because you get evenly balanced, 50-50, and and then we have a room room to play. 
you, we can either go high or low. Now, if you're an experienced user, there's no need for me to start you on that. Now it's a matter of, okay, how experienced are you? What are you used to using? And then going ahead and recommending that and finding out, you know, what are your goals? What's your intention? Why do you want to use it? How about marijuana for, for like enhancing sex, like making it just a better sex? We, right? just, we, just, we just talked about it. What, it is that, is, does, does he try to do this stuff? To, what, what do you think? I mean, why does he? You guys like, because I mean, no, I mean, I when I do... She's giggling in the corner here. She's, <laughs> she's very pretty, your wife. Okay. She wasn't ready for you. I know, but no, but listen, here's the thing. When I smoke marijuana for sex, I get weird fucking thoughts and shit when having sex. I'm like dark thoughts about like my most perverted shit comes out. Why? What, is, is that like common or what? It's common. Now, here's the thing. And he, he, Not that I'm a pervert bad Lisa, but I mean, I, you know, it's like, I mean, like, I mean, I do get these, you know, well, dark he, thoughts and stuff. Here's the weird thing. In women, cannabis increases their libido. Because it drops their inhibitions, like alcohol. Mm. In men, like, typically it lowers. Bill Cosby, that we call that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. But in men, typically it lowers their libido because it causes hypogonadism. It drops your testosterone levels. Got it. The science has shown that. Mm. Now, in certain individuals, it does in the proper dosing causes that vasodilation will cause you to get a heart on because it will open up the blood vessels and will potentiate and stimulate. Just like earlier this year in, in, in April, I was interviewed by Rolling Stone magazine on the use of cannabis prior to sporting activities for sports, which Matt, Matt talked Barnes. To, Matt Barnes explained it beautifully right. because it's, it's true. It helps you focus. It relaxes you. It calms you down. And it lowers your blood pressure so you're able to, you know, maintain a level of calmness and it vasodilates so it allows more oxygen to get to your tissues so you get faster recovery. How much, when you talk about hypogonadism, that means, you know, um, you know to suppressing the function of your testicles, basically, right. for yeah. a man, right? Uh -huh. So, which means lower levels of free testosterone, lower sex drive, less muscle mass. How, how profound is this? Is it minor? Is it common? Or is that, or is that a real worry for people? It's not, it's not a real worry. It's just, it's found in the literature. Because you have CB1 receptors in the testicles, just like you have CB1 receptors in the ovaries. Um, while I was in Medellin, the, the gentleman that wrote the, the foreword to my book, he's the one that named anandamide in 1992. Raphael Meshulam in Israel discovered it, and then uh, Lumir Hanush named it. And he was at the event. He spoke right before I did. Oh, okay. He, in fact, he was the keynote speaker, and then I was, you know, follow up that act. But I got up there, and he was talking about he's creating a formulation for women that suffer with endometriosis. 10% of the women all over the world suffer with endometriosis. That means the uterine lining growing outside grows, the uterus. Exactly. Yeah, right. You have tissue in, from inside the uterus, outside the uterus, right. and it covers painful. everything. Extremely painful, really severe yeah. um, menstrual cramps. And the treatment to get rid of that is to get them pregnant. Mm. But it's virtually impossible to get them pregnant because the sperm doesn't make its way up right. into the canal where it needs to to, right. to get the woman pregnant. Yeah. And so... They've, they're creating formulations. Um, you know, Whoopi Goldberg created a tampon with cannabis, mm. THC, for m PMS, menstrual cramping, <laughs> menstrual pains. I just don't think about that. The kind of was weird. A tampon with cannabis in it. Yeah. Okay. They also have ovules and suppositories that you can I use say, indirectly. So the, don't so get, the, don't the, get freaky. Don't 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 get freaky. do the candle. The candle up your ass. Never happened. <laughs> Never happened. That was the, the most embarrassing moments of my life was, was um, at the premiere of the movie. My mother is sitting to my, my left, and you know, and the scene comes on with the dominatrix is like beating me with a candle on my ass. I'm, I'm like, Mom, me, Mom, you know this is just pure fiction. She, she's like, I know what you're capable of. <laughs> <laughs> Mothers do know. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I raise you. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it, it does, you know. Because of that, it does help. But, you know, you've got suppositories. These are different modes of administration. So you can, you know, patients that have a tumor of the head and neck and they're having a hard time swallowing, mm. you know. True. Together with the inhalation, they, they could use a suppository. Yeah. Or they have, you know, colorectal cancer. Then it goes right into and it goes locally to that area. Also, the benefit of using it interrectally, like inhalation or in a suppository and smoking, is that it bypasses the liver. So the absorption takes sure. place yeah. virtually immediately, and you don't have to screw with the liver breaking it down and screwing, you know, making it slower. 
THCA becomes THC, CBDA becomes right. CBD, et cetera. It's like when you free base cocaine, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I have a little experience in that matter, I'm sad to say. Okay. Oh, well, I was a paramedic right around the time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where crack started hitting the streets. Right. So.